Today we are working on the Wingo Concordia again. This is the car that was used in the movie Black Moon Rising. And today we're gonna to talk about the wing. This car actually had, I'll call it a double wing. So this one is actually mounted to the car and the wing was, I say was, mounted here. So the bigger wing was mounted here and you can see it has torn off. So the double wing was kind of like this. And so you see this airfoil shaped so it would produce downforce, the reverse of what an airplane wing would be. This one though, that's actually mounted to the car, you'll see its airfoil shape is backwards. Um, I say that this is kind of the same profile that you would see on an airplane wing. So this one would actually create lift. Now, I don't know if there's some aerodynamic principles that say if you got one this way and the other one the other way, if that somehow helps. Either way, we need to scan and model this so we can do some analysis. First step in our process is always scanning. We're gonna get some uh, markers on this one and do some scanning. We've got uh, some of the markers on the car. I don't know if this will be enough. It's easy to add more. Let me show you the scanner we're gonna use. So this one's from RevoPoint. It's a little small guy, Inspire 2. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm excited to see what it can do. So for this one, we're doing parallel lines, we're doing the marker tracking, and it is a dark or black object. So we'll see how this one goes. The Rebel Point Inspire 2 has 11 parallel infrared laser lines and infrared structured light. Those are the two different scanning modes this has. And it's got accuracy up to 0.05 millimeters. You can also do face and body scanning. You can connect via Wi-Fi to mobile devices. I'll say this one is a budget-friendly one. It's less than $500. So we like to try out new scanners from time to time. So if you're in the market for a scanner, I'll leave a link in the video description below. With the scanning all done, I was able to then model things. So this is the small wing. After it was all modeled, I printed out the profile, matched it on the end of the wing to make sure it was accurate. I also modeled the mounts as well as the large wing. I put that all in assembly with a 3D scan of the rear of the car. I just scanned half of it and mirrored it. So that completed our 3D model. Next is contacting the aerodynamic experts. Meet the ARC 2000 portable power station with a strong 2000 watt output and a 1536 watt hour battery that can expand up to 4608 watt hour. It's built to power almost everything in your home from lights and fans to fridges and tools, even during emergencies. So it's got your state of charge at its current rate, how many days. And again, you've got your USB things for like cell phones or anything else you need to charge. This is your 12 volt stuff. So like any of your car things that you wanna put in like air pumps, things like that. And on this side, you've got all your AC things. Here you've got extra battery ports, so you can chain these together. So this is actually very cool. It's got an app. It kind of shows you output for DC and AC. So again, if we like click this off, you see then it turns it off. So it tells you the total output. So we can, let's, let's turn on some of the lights here. So we got flash mode. Okay. So we could turn it on and off like the AC output. So yeah, all this can be done remotely. Pretty cool. Great little power supply. Allows me to work wherever I need. This kind of is a favorite for our employees. Just kind of pull around wherever their workstation is and use it for whatever power you need. I'll use it when I'm charging the computer up. I think we're what, several weeks of charging laptops and working with soldering irons and everything else. This one is totally silent. I know it's a little thing, but it would be annoying if you're camping with it and that thing is clicking or making noise or... For whatever reason, this wall has like no power to it. This is John's station here. Yeah, I really like having this portable station because I can, I've got USB in the front and I've got all my chargers around back here. Literally have, you know, all the power I need. I can put my laptop up here, plug it in. It's convenient, got everything charging. It's, yeah, it's great. The battery lasts over 4,000 charge cycles, giving you up to 15 years of use. Need fast charging? The ARC 2000 fully recharges in about 80 minutes with AC power. You can also connect up to 1,200 watt solar panels to recharge anywhere, perfect for camping, RV trips, or off-grid living. Whether it's for outdoor adventures or home backup power, the ARC 2000 is your reliable energy partner. Hey Jeremy, good morning, how are you? Yeah, it does look like a really cool topic. Yeah, and so we've, we've kind of uh, worked together a little bit in the past. And so that's kind of why, why I'm reaching out to you. Um, this is a unique one for me. So we're doing this movie car. They've got a wing that has kind of been taken off or torn off and um, it's kind of a double wing and the bottom wing is like inverted. So let me show you, I've just kind of done a quick scan of the back, but if you look at like the, this is one of the wings, you can kind of see the profile. It looks very much like an airplane, like this wants to lift, not downforce, right? 
Yeah, exactly. The suction side is yeah. actually at the bottom. So it seems like that's backwards to me. However, there's another wing that sits right on top of this that's kind of the way I would expect. It's kind of inverted, and, which I would think that would provide downforce. Yeah, that would make sense. Like, like the, the opposite of this one would make sense. Yeah, and so um, my question is, did they, are they somehow really, really, really smart, like F1 smart or something, where they say, hey, we're going to do this so it gets extra extra downforce or is it just like they they made an oops well it does sound like 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 a funny idea because um of course in f1 you have like multi-element wing but then they would all be oriented in the same way and working together to generate like a massive downforce as if it's one big uh, airfoil element and the slots they help to like kind of feed air to avoid separation so that works that is out there in this case if you have two wings uh, but one is opposite towards the, the other one um you'll actually create like a funnel effect in between them and the pressure patterns around each of these wing elements will actually cancel each other out. At least that's the, that's the theory. Maybe there's something we're overlooking, so it would be really nice uh, to look at a simulation for which we would need a 3D model um, to, to be conclusive, but it, it, it looks like it, it, it contradicts some of the laws that we have seen before, let's say. So if, if I would like to get your help, what is it that you would need uh, or that we would need. Yeah, for that we would need a 3D model. So as soon as you have a model, just upload the stuff to Airship. Uh, once you have it uploaded, you can just set up the simulation. I'm excited about this one. Uh, I liked it when I saw the, the email come in. So I'm curious, what's the history of this car, by the way? Well, let me let me show you, I'll take you back there. That's one wing and you can see like the profile is like an airplane. It's kind of bricked off. This is the other <laughs> wing and it's, I was gonna say it's kind of like that. And so you can see it's more the, the way you would think to create downforce. That wing attaches like right here. I, I was gonna just repair it as is, and I thought, you know what, this would probably be a great time to kind of get with you and show what mm -hmm. your stuff can do. And well, thanks for your time. I'll uh, get uh, some models and things over to you and uh, we'll go from there. Fantastic, I look forward to it. Hey, Jeremy, um, I made a quick video. So I ran a bunch of simulations. Um, I did a simulation on the top wing, um, I did one on the bottom wing, I did one on the combination of both, and I did one on the full assembly. And then I compared everything into an Excel sheet. Uh, and the results are really quite interesting. If I start with the first one, this is the top wing in isolated mode. So if you look at the surface uh, or pressure clouds, uh, you can see some uh, losses here because we don't have an end plate. Um, so the air which sees the uh, pressure side here at the bottom wants to actually bypass towards the sides and the top, uh, which means the flow separates. You have a little vortex here, um, which you can also see in the surface friction. So there's recirculation of the flow. That's why you have these streamlines. But other than that, this basically looks fine. If you look at surface pressure, you'll see lots of low pressure at the bottom side here, um, which is what you want with this profile, and mild overpressure here at the top. Um, which is what you want to generate downforce uh, using both sides. So high pressure here, uh, low pressure here. So positive here, negative here. So net result is a downforce of 483 newtons. So that's all normal. If you look at the bottom wing in isolated mode, we see a similar story. If you look at the surface pressure, again, you have a suction effect at the top. Again, this looks all normal. So this one generates lift as you would expect because it's 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 a wing probe. In total, the, the top wing, minus 483, the bottom wing, uh, plus 148. If you then look at the combination, you start to see weird things. Um, first of all, you start to see flow separation on the top wing. And the, the reason for this is that the flow no longer flows freely uh, below and above this wing. There's like a choke effect because these two wings are actually creating a funnel and the air has less, or it has more resistance to go underneath the wing, which means some of the air now wants to jump across the wing. So you can see this as like one solid block almost. And that means the air will have to curve upwards a lot more, which means the angle of attack is a bit different, a bit, a bit more aggressive, which means you get your flow separation here. Um, the same for the bottom wing. Uh, so the air now needs to jump underneath, which means you start to get flow separation there as well, because the middle part is choked. So, And if you look at the forces, the same top wing now generates only 70 newtons of downforce in this combined configuration, because they're choking uh, the flow and they're canceling, canceling each other out. Um, same for the bottom wing, um, where it used to generate 148 newtons of uh, lift, it's now generating only 15, 15 newtons of lift. So the combined uh, force of this assembly is just minus 55 newtons of downforce, which is really not a lot. If you look at the surface pressure, for example, uh, we used to have a lot of surface uh, sort of suction effects on this wing here. Um, so all this was suction and just a mild bit of high pressure here where you have the um, stagnation at the leading edge. 
Um, if you look at this one, uh, because of this choking effect, this entire zone is now pressurized, uh, and the same for this other wing. Uh, and then it's only in the midsection where the flow really gets through and gets accelerated, they have a suction effect. But because the two wings are so close to each other, they cancel each other out. Um, so the performance is entirely different, and uh, as we guessed, uh, they're just canceling each other out. Then I added these parts on top of the assembly, and what you see here is that um, there's yet another blockage element, uh, which is the car itself. So the air needs to curve upward even more, so that you have even more flow separation at the top here. Um, uh, the bottom uh, now again features less flow separation because it's actually forced to stay horizontal uh, because the car is there. These wings uh, are cancelling out the pressure you would have on the car itself. So um, if we now plot the forces, um, you see that the bottom wing now generates lift of 109 newtons and the top one generates downforce of 20 newtons so that the combined effect is just 88 newtons uh, of lift uh, by the way because this assembly flow is now blocked in between the wings and the cars which means you've, you've kind of pressurized this area uh, pushing the, the wing assembly upwards combination in free air uh, is just a minor bit of uh, downforce and when you put them on the car they actually start to generate a slight bit of lift um, and that's what we see in conclusion so feel free to go through uh, the other parameters um, if you want to work with the slices, you can actually visualize what's going on. So I hope this is useful. Feel free to use this screen capture in your videos. I hope this works. I'm really looking forward to the video. All right, so you saw on the aerodynamic analysis, the wings actually produce a lift on this car. So that's not a good thing. I was thinking of just uh, remaking this as is. So to make everything whole again, I've got to figure some things out. So this guy, again, super thin and this is what takes all the load from both wings. So this wing as well as where it's attached to that one. So again, this mount we could probably reuse. This wing though, trying to weld on some very thin aluminum, I think we're just gonna have the same problem with all the uh, downforce and stuff, all the force that it brings. I think it's just gonna shear again. So we're gonna remake this one. I think this one we can probably keep. We just need to bulk up the mounting. But before we just go and remake this one, um, you'll have to let me know in the comments if you want to be true to the original car, remake it as is, or uh, maybe we should do something different, like invert it or do something else to kind of uh, make it a little more stable when it's moving at speed. Um, let me know in the comments. I'm going to show you a couple designs that I'm going to pass by our aerodynamic experts. The first design will just be simply taking this wing and inverting it so that it's producing um, not lift, but downforce. So that'll be one. Uh, another one will be maybe just getting rid of this second wing. Um, I don't love that because then it's kind of a little bit different from the movie. Tell me if uh, you got one of those as your favorites or if you've got another idea. So either way, we're gonna remake this wing because it's kind of torn apart. Um, we're likely gonna do some fiberglass things and some new mounts, but uh, let me know in the comments how you think we should remake the wing. That'll do it for this time. See you next time. All right, either way, we've got a few, let's see. With scanning all done, I opted no. From here, I so that completed, right? Is that what we're saying?